Well, glad to be back home and having a chance to uh, to get back in our stadium. The last couple of weeks have been disappointing, uh, to say the least. Uh, the game Saturday, while there were a few positives, I thought that uh, we played better defensively against the run, especially in the early downs. Uh, the bottom line is we weren't efficient enough to uh, to win. We had uh, very poor performance again in the special teams area. And offensively, we just didn't score enough points. You have to be more uh, efficient when we have the ball and try to put points on the board. So put that game behind us. I think Clemson's probably the most talented team we've played since I've been here at Georgia Tech, at least uh, in, in this stadium. They bring in uh, a bunch of uh, really good players. They're playing well. Uh, so it'll be a heck of a challenge this week to try to bounce back and get ready to go. So with that, we'll throw it open for questions. A week ago, you said the sky isn't falling. Is it a little gray and cloudy now? Well, I think it's all relative. I mean, it, you know, you're you're sitting here and we're six and two. Uh, you know, you can look at it any way you want. If you want to be negative, you can be negative. If you want to try to be positive, you can be positive. Uh, you know, I choose to keep working and try to be positive. It's, uh, I, you know, as I said last week, let's, I don't want to put the L's down until we lose the game. If it's okay with everybody, I'd like to try to at least play them, see what happens. Uh, you know, I think the same guys who are a little cloudy are the same guys who didn't pick us to win six games when the year started. So hard to have it both ways. Coach, I'm Nick Cellini. Ken brought me up last week. I just thought I'd introduce myself. Mm. Uh, is it more physical or mental right now with Tevin and his struggles over the last four games? Well, I think it's uh, some of both. It's uh, any time that you're, that you're struggling, I think that it, it's hard to separate the two. And, you know, it's not all Tevin. I mean, so clearly he can, he can play better, but the guys around him have to play better too. I think that those guys get too much credit and too much blame sometimes. So... Uh, he's like everybody else. He's working hard and, and, and trying to correct what he needs to correct. And uh, right now, that's all you can do. How similar is this offense to what Florida State did? I know Al Groh mentioned that, comparing them to Florida State in the early 2000s, how explosive they can be, talking about Clemson, obviously. Well, I don't know that the scheme is, is that much similar. I think the personnel is probably what he's talking about. They have the, the freshman receivers really good. Uh, Ellington's one of the best backs in the league. The tight end's probably going to be the first tight end taken in the draft. Uh, you know, across from Watkins, the other receiver is is a is a great player. He was a high profile guy a year ago. So they got a lot of weapons. Their quarterback's playing well. Uh, so they can hit a lot of big plays, and they have. Coach, if I go back to Tevin, <clears throat> I know I've heard you talk about before about how you know you have to treat different quarterbacks differently. Some like to be. You know, you need to get in their face. I mean, you need to, you know, kind of sweet talk them. How would you describe what Tevin's personality is like and how you try to, you know, build this confidence and, and try to get him going? He's kind of quiet and reserved a little bit. I don't think he's – you don't see a lot of emotion. I think he's got some, some confidence. Uh, you know, it's like anything else. It's like sometimes guys are going to make plays that aren't as good as others. It, you know, does anybody really believe that he tried to throw it to the guy from Miami on the first play of the game. I mean, you know, that's why you play the game. He didn't do it intentionally. To me, a bigger problem would have been if he went to the wrong guy or he wasn't looking at what he was looking at or he wasn't trying to do what he's doing. That, that's to me, is a bigger error than if you're trying to throw it to somebody and you overthrow uh, or, or whatever. And for the most part, last week uh, – you know, we we struggled on some reads inside, but a, a lot of that's also has to do with there's not a lot of guys getting knocked back and a lot of guys in his face. So it's not just him. I mean, there's there's a lot of things to go along. And as far as motivating him, he's pretty much a self motivator. I mean, he's hard on himself. Uh, the guys that I tend to be a little harder on are the guys who who aren't as hard on themselves or don't take. The accountability. I, I don't think you'll find that with Tevin. He'll take accountability for whatever he does. Coach, your experience here at home, have you seen the sense the guys a little bit more amped up, a little more excited playing at night as opposed to during the day, or is it pretty much the same? 
day or night? Uh, you know, we hadn't had that many night games actually here. Uh, we had the Thursday night Virginia Tech game, which was a great atmosphere. Hopefully it'll be good to be home. I think we're going to have a full house and get the fans behind them. And, uh, you know, I think our guys look at this game as a, as a challenge and a great opportunity. I mean, you got a undefeated team coming in that's in the top five in the BCS and you get to play them at home at night. Uh, you know, if you can't get up for this one, you probably ought not to be playing. Uh, on that line, I know you're a guy that, you know, you, you like a good challenge and, and like it when people tell you you can't do something. Do you feel like your team has that same sort of personality that, you know, they, they, if you tell them you guys, you guys aren't going to win or they hear that, that maybe that gets them going a little bit more? You know, I don't know. I think that, that everybody uses different things for motivation, whatever works for you. Uh, some guys probably don't, don't know that, that people are telling them they're not going to win. Other guys do. Uh, I think for the most part, they just they come out to play. <clears throat> and, and the effort the last week was good. Week before, it wasn't as good. Last week, the effort was okay. We just got to do a better job executing, have a, have a better plan that they can do. And try not to self-destruct in the in the special teams area. Looking at their games, it, there have been some shootouts that Clemson's been involved. And is that a, is there some things you might have picked up on film that you can possibly exploit that shows you can get the offense back on track? I think what happens is if you really look at it from a, a standpoint of analyzing and coaching the teams that go that play fast are going to have higher scores uh, for instance our game with Miami Saturday there was 10 possessions okay Clemson and North Carolina there was 16 possessions so that's almost another half of football so you're going to have more points both teams you know uh, last year I think a great example is last year Auburn you know people were talking about their defense you know they won the national championship they weren't that good on defense well, if you're playing that much more because your offense is running 90 plays a game, common sense would tell you the defense is playing 90 plays a game. You know, I heard some, some commentators talking about Oklahoma State. Well, they can't win with their defense. They're 100th in the country. Well, it's probably because they're playing, you know, 18 or 20 possessions when other defenses are playing 10 or 12. So it's all relative. Now, the North Carolina game, there was some uh, – you know, North Carolina fumbled a kickoff return and on the 10-yard line, and Clemson got it in the third quarter. And they threw an interception on the 12-yard line. They got it in the third quarter. On the flip side, North Carolina ran a kickoff back for a touchdown. Uh, all those things, you know, and there's no time, so it's, it's a game. But when you're as talented as they are, you can score at bunches in a hurry now. And it's the same thing. Even if you're, trying to, if you're not trying to play fast, if you score bunches in a hurry, there's going to be more possessions, and it's going to kind of kind of go that way. So is this a game where you try and, and input your own tempo and slow it down? We, we just got to try to do what we can do. I think that what's happened to us the last couple of weeks, as we were was talking earlier, we've kind of got done to us what we've done to other people, where you limit the possessions in the game, and when you're not efficient at them, it's not much fun. You know, you, you look at the Miami game, if, okay, we go 20 plays, 90 yards, and eat up the second quarter, and it's 14-7. to seven. Okay, if we don't give up the score right before halftime, you come back, you're one score down, and now the game's a, kind of a different game. It becomes imperative that we score in the third quarter. So we take the opening or the second half kick, and we burn seven minutes, and we get no points. So we had two possessions in the third quarter. Well, when you don't score, now it's 21-7. You're not going to have any 20-play, 90-yard drives and win the game. So it changes what you have to do. And, it, and that's what we've been able to do in the past to other people because if you're efficient and you get up 21-7, it kind of makes them one-dimensional and that they know, hey, if we don't score, we may not see the ball again for six or seven minutes. Well, we've done it to ourselves the last two weeks because we've got behind and, and we haven't been efficient enough on offense to come back and get it close enough to, to where you can really play that way. 
Coach, uh, with, with the possibility of uh, Bino having to take some, maybe take some reps at center this week, will someone like uh, Morgan Bailey be available to get some reps at tackle? Yeah, Morgan's going to practice at tackle. Uh, he started, he played last week or practiced last week, so this will be his second week. And we'll switch around with Nick McCray and Bino. They'll have to roll in there. Both of them will get reps at center this week. You have to substitute more liberally with this Chad Morris offense and the fast pace he likes to play? I think it just depends. Uh, you know, mostly defense nowadays are, is predicated on personnel groupings more than than whatever. You try to get matchups with 10 personnel or 11 personnel or or whatever. Uh, for the most part this year, we've had very few guys. If you look at our plays a game, I mean, in the game Saturday, uh, both teams ran 60 plays. So it's like uh, I don't think we had anybody. The secondary guys do. But uh, the upfront guys didn't play more than 35, 40 plays. So they've been rolling them anyway, and I'm sure we'll do the same that way. The secondary is the guys that have to play. We'd, with the injuries that happened early in the year, we hadn't been able to take them out. And then when you match up, nickel, dime, whatever, they're still out there. They don't get to come out where some of the linemen do. Coach, there was an uh, AP article yesterday that said uh, Denzel McCoy and 54 other Yellow Jackets signed a petition saying mm -hmm. they want a cut of the ever-increasing TV revenues. If the president's asked you your opinion, should the players get it, what would you say? You know, I'm all for the players getting whatever they can get. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with that. Denzel hasn't played since he's been here. Uh, you know, he came in, he had a medical condition when he came in, and he's on full scholarship and getting to go to school for free, so... I'm a little surprised that he would want more, but uh, the uh, you know the other guys that's their prerogative. If you ask anybody, if they brought a petition in here and ask you if everybody signed it, you could get three thousand dollars. Would you sign? <laughs> so I think that's probably where the the signing of the petition is. Uh, I'm gonna find out more about it this afternoon. And like I said, I I don't see Denzel because he hasn't played. He's a medical. Uh, I wasn't aware that he's on that. I fully support his right to be on it. I mean, they've got their rights to, to voice their opinion. So, But uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about it before I get too in-depth into it. I promise I'm not trying to stir it up. We had Tommy Bowden on this morning, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard this argument before. He said it's easier to recruit against what you guys do at Tech because if guys want to get ready for the NFL, they don't want to come to Tech. What's your response to that? Well, I just point out the guys from Tech that are in the NFL. And uh, the, uh, you know, that's, that's what you have to do. So you could take almost any position. We've only been here for this is our fourth year, so it's it'd be hard to point out. But... Uh, you know, we've got two running backs playing in the NFL that are active since I've been here. We had the first wide receiver taken in the draft that's playing in the NFL. Uh, you've got on defense, uh, you know, Derek Morgan was a first-round draft pick. Uh, you got guys playing. So you point it out. Uh, that's all you can do. And and I think that, that for the most part, when you try to recruit uh, – Truthfully, if you're trying to recruit a kid that just wants to go to the NFL, he's probably not coming to Georgia Tech anyway. 